good morning welcome to the e sikshana program this is professor umar rao from rv college of engineering bringing you the lecture series on transmission and distribution under the aegis of vtu e learning center so we are dealing with module 5 uh, and uh, in the early sessions we saw how to solve for distribution uh, networks uh, we considered radial networks and uh, we also did some uh, problems and numericals we solved on uh, meshed systems and in this um, uh, session i will be starting with reliability okay so this is the last part reliability and quality at the last section in unit 5 so we will uh, discuss that in this session now first understand one thing when you talk of reliability what you are saying is see i have a product if i say it is reliable means it does not break down okay so this might be for my usage like see uh, for example there may be there are thousands of applications on this mobile i don't even use 5% of it so i do not know what is happening to the other applications i don't use whether they are reliable or not so when i say this is reliable it's from my perspective that it is functioning the way i want it to function that's the meaning of reliability so reliability is directly linked to a product failure clear and uh, so when i talk of the reliability of electrical power what do i mean what the customer means is that whenever the customer wants the power is available that's the meaning of reliability clear quality is an added uh, feature so quality is after my system is reliable then i look for quality see first i want this mobile i want a mobile any mobile which doesn't fail once i have a mobile then i am going to start looking at its quality hey this image i take from this is not very good and then the audio when i listen to the music the speaker in this mobile is not very good so an apple uh, pro 11 pro or 12 pro is better so you start talking of quality after reliability right supposing okay i have high class for quality here this is you know fantastic uh, images i am taking everything is fine audio and all but it keeps breaking down every month then what is the use of having a very high quality clear so quality without reliability or reliability without quality both are today meaningless so they go hand in hand you want a reliable product of high quality now what has happened uh, now you see here downtime costs of electric power are very high you have an industry so if there is no power today almost all the industries are fully automated so if there is no power then a lot of damage will take place and it is very difficult to even quantify this for example uh just consider a plastic molding industry where you know plastic products are molded right now let's say the power just is interrupted for a few uh, minutes but in this few minutes a process might be stopped okay and whatever plastic process was taking place maybe to liquefy it and put it into the molds all that solidified and to set it back took 4 hours or 5 hours so you see the electric outage may be only for a few minutes but the impact may last for a very long time and the losses will be really high so today the downtime costs of electric power are very high downtime means the time for which a particular industry is down that is downtime next supposing we have a blackout so reliability means no power no power means for a long long time you call it as a blackout so after a blackout because today you no know, the networks are very big so if you take india the entire indian grid is one so it will take a long time around 48 to 72 hours that is 2 to 3 days to restore the network you can imagine the economic loss that would arise because of this 
right? Rel Therefore, reliability assessment is the most important factor in designing and planning of distribution systems. See, because it's a distribution systems which ultimately delivers the power to the consumer. So the distribution system has to be highly reliable. And not only reliable, it should also operate in an economic manner with minimum interruption to customer loads. Sometimes it may be unavoidable, right? So that's why we use the word minimal interruption to customer loads. Now, in the past, lot of importance was given to the reliability of generating systems that is the generating stations because you know the generating systems are conventional and they're capital in intensive high investments has gone into uh, generation and there was not too much of focus on the distribution side right but now there is a lot of focus on reliability of distribution systems and uh, one more thing very sensitive electronic equipment and automated process industries. That's the order of the day. Electronics is there everywhere in all our lives, including the medical industry. And process industries are entirely automated. So this requires a very high degree of reliability of electric power. Can you think of our, see when we were children, for us, if the power went off, all that it meant was I have to light a candle, that's all. Nothing more than that. Today for me, I, I'm not even talking of industry. I'm talking as, as a lay person, as one person. So to me, today, if the power goes off, right, for, some, uh, for a long time, it just doesn't mean that I have to light a candle. Okay, for me, it means I don't have AC, I don't have heater, my home automation system will go, my TV doesn't work, my refrigerator doesn't work, my laptop cannot work, I can't charge my back, I, I can't charge my mobile, I can't charge my laptop, I have a smartwatch which I can't charge. So, so many things. Our dependence on electricity has become very, very high, necessitating a very detailed focus on reliability of distribution systems. And consumer awareness also is better today because we know uh, our rights and so we demand it, we, we demand it. So now let's uh, look at some definitions. Sometimes they are uh, used interchangeably, but let us be very clear. So reliability, what is the meaning of reliability? So every word in these definitions will be important. It is the measure of probability. So reliability is a function of probability. You know, when people give you a guarantee for a product, you buy a refrigerator, a guarantee card comes with it. That means the producer is hopeful that it doesn't break down in that. But in the event of a breakdown, they'll bear the cost. So it's only a probability. Numbers. From past statistics so if they have sold thousand pieces one of them may fail okay so that's how they decide on the duration of uh, warranty which they can give without an economic loss and so on so it's a measure of the probability that an item a product or a collection of items that means a system a system will be a collection of different products will perform its intended function for a specified interval under stated conditions. You can, you can talk of reliability under normal conditions. I can't talk of reliability under a storm or a tsunami, which you know blows off everything. So we have to state the conditions under which I am claiming the reliability of a product. So this period can vary from a specified time period so we'll say you take this product. One year warranty means one year. You can be assured there will be no failures. And if there's a failures, cost free, the pro producer will, uh, or the vendor will attend to it. Or it can be for a lifetime. So there are products which come with 25 years guarantee. Sleep well mattress gives you a 25 year guarantee. So, you know, it, or it could be for the entire life cycle of the item. So that is the meaning of reliability. So what is the probability that your equipment or a system will work? 
for some interval, specified interval under some specified conditions. Next, availability. It is a measure of the percentage of time the equipment is in an operable state. Right? So, if I say the availability time of a machine is 85%, that means 85% of the time it is available and there is a 15% downtime. So, your total time will be uptime plus downtime. So, I can measure availability as the uptime divided by the total time. Good enough. So, what this means, if I consider a window of time, say three years or four years or whatever, or one year, 85% of the time it is available and 15% of the time it is not available for whatever reasons. For whatever reasons. Okay. That's the meaning of availability. The product is, is functioning the way it should. It is available. Adequacy. It is the quality of being sufficient, adequate and able to meet the needs. Okay. I need 500 megawatts of power. Do I have 500 megawatts of power? That is adequacy. If it is available, if it is there, adequate. Now, this adequacy may be there only 85% of the time. So, the availability is 85%. Security. This relates to the ability of the system to meet the demand under dynamic disturbances in the system. For example, I need 500 megawatts. Right now, my 500 megawatts is met, so it is available. Now there is a fault. In one of the generators, there is a fault. And so 100 megawatts is removed from the system. Does my system have enough of support? to take care of this generator outage. That means, do I have excess generation? That is secure. Clear? So when you say I'm financially secure, what do you mean? You have some savings in the bank. So if there is any problem and things are not normal, you can draw on it. That is the meaning of security. That's the meaning of security. Clear? Fine. Now, does security, reliability all come free? Definitely not. You want very high quality, very highly reliable. You should pay money for it. Okay. So now let's just see from this concept of reliability, what is the cost from the utility perspective? So let us say, as I said, let us continue with a simple example. The demand is 500 megawatts. In a, for a particular distribution system, it is 500 megawatts. So if they have a supp supply of exactly 500 megawatts, right, then the system is not very reliable because if there's any fault, then they cannot supply the entire 500 megawatts. Clear? So they must have some additional investment. To first of all, if their demand is 500 megawatts, they may need to have at least 700 megawatts, 200 megawatts extra to take care of any generator outages, etc. This costs money, right? Okay. Then let us say they have a they have a line supplying a group of customers. Now there is a fault in that line. So these group of customers are without power. So what they have to do, they have to put one more parallel line. So if one line fails, the other line will carry the power. We saw that advantage of parallel distribution systems. This costs money. Yes. So for, from the utility perspective, from the utility perspective, as the reliability increases, the cost will also go up because they have to spend on building redundancy, redundancy of generation, redundancy of uh, lines, redundancy of protection and so on. Clear? So cost goes up as reliability is more. Now let us come to the customer. So let us say that your power is not very reliable. In a day, you have about two, three hours of power cut. So what does the customer do? The customer has a DG set, diesel generator set, or a UPS, right? So that is going to cost money. And if, if see, you may go for a small UPS. If you think uh, occasionally there is a power cut, the UPS will suffice. But supposing like in rural India, you know, daily there is eight hours power cut then you need to have a full LDG. 
which is going to cost a lot of money. So for the customer, as the reliability goes high, cost will come down. Because if I know there is going to be no power cut, I don't have to invest anything on backup. Clear? Or if it is just five minutes power cut once in a way, I don't mind. Five minutes, I don't mind being without power. Or I just have to make provision for backup only for those five minutes. So it is opposite to that of the utility. For the utility, as reliability goes up, cost will go up. And for the customer, as reliability goes up, cost will come down. So what is the total cost for the system? of the entire system, both some of those two costs. So for a particular reliability condition, for a particular reliability condition, what is the cost to the utility? What is the cost to the customer? That is the total cost to the system. Now, do I want 100% reliability? Let us say I want to buy a mobile. Okay. And the fellow assures me it will never fail. You can use it as long as you want throughout its life, everything. But it's going to cost you 4 lakhs. Okay. Definitely I won't buy it. So, wanting 100% reliability or very high reliability may become too expensive. It may become too expensive. So, we will see how I can decide. So, now you see here, this is my reliability on the x-axis and this is my cost. Here we have shown annual cost. So for the customer, as the reliability goes up, the cost comes down. Because your, um, you know, what you have to spend on your backup will come down. And for the utility, see here, as the reliability goes up, the cost goes up. The exact shape will depend on the system and, you know, what sort of equipment they have and what sort of loads they have and so on. This is the normal curve. So the cost will go up, right, for the utility. So the total cost is sum of these two. So you can see the total cost, somewhere it reaches some minimum and then again increases. Because here, for low reliability, customer cost is high, utility cost is low. So for high reliability, utility cost is high and customer cost is low. Somewhere in between, you get the minimum system reliability cost. So we try to operate the system at this value of reliability. At this value of reliability. Clear? So what are some of the indices uh, we work on? The first is what is very important in, uh, in uh, reliability studies is what is called as the failure rate. What is a failure rate? Rate means what with respect to time. So how many number of failures are there in a given operating time, which could be a year, whatever, six months, one month, one day, depends on what product you are using. It is, so we'll see the definition, formal definition. It is the frequency with which a component or a system fails expressed in failures per unit time. What this unit time? You decide. Could be a month, could be a year, could be five years, could be 10 years, could be a season. And it is often denoted by lambda. In reliability uh, books and papers, you will see many people use the symbol lambda. So what is lambda? Total number of failures divided by total test or operating time. There are 12 interruptions per year. That is lambda. But you see what the problem is, it doesn't tell you how long each interruption lasts. It just tells you 12 times there was a power cut or a blackout in a year. Okay, you have a scooter. Two in five years. So two times it has broken down in five years. Yeah. So the number of failures per unit time, the unit time can will vary depending on the product. The reciprocal of this, what will be the reciprocal of this? I have five failures per year. If I take the reciprocation, the reciprocal of that, I will get what is the duration between each of the, between two failures. 
So that is called as the mean time between failures. Mean time. So see, you have two failures in a year. Doesn't mean the one occurs at the sixth month and another occurs at the twelfth month. No, one one could have occurred. It's only statistics, right? Statistics. That's all. So one could have occurred in February and another could have occurred in November. So you you don't know when it has occurred, but you are you are using a unit time of a year. So you are saying there are two failures in a year. So in twelve months. So what is the gap between two is six months average. But gap could be more or less. I'm only talking in terms of average. So that is called as the you know, commonly denoted as MTBF. So it is one by lambda. One by lambda. Let's take a simple example. So let us say there is an industry, and all their data is on a hard disk. It's on a hard disk. Okay. So. The MTBF, the mean time between failures, is eight lakh hours. So, what is the failure rate if the disk is used three thousand hours in a year, and it is used continuously throughout the year? So, mean time between failures. Okay, how much time is there? So, eighty eight lakh hours. Is the MTBF, and it operates for three thousand hours per year. So it is two hundred and sixty-six point six seven years. What is the meaning of this? If your disk fails now, right, it will fail again after eighty thousand hours of usage, and you are using only three thousand hours in a year. So it will fail again after two hundred and sixty-six years. That's the meaning. Clear? So lambda, the failure rate is one by MTBF into hundred. So that in, uh, that gives you in percentage point three seven five percent. So this implies that point three seven five percent of disks will fail in an average year. So, if you have hundred disks, point three seven five percent, point three seven five disks will fail. That's the mean. Clear? Got it? How to interpret the parameter? Now, instead of using three thousand, I use it throughout the year. So, what I said instead of three thousand, I use throughout the year means it is eight seven six zero hours. Three hundred and sixty five days is normally taken. So that works. So three sixty five into twenty four is eight seven six zero. So now it is ninety one point three two years, and lambda is one point zero nine five percent. That means if you are using hundred, if you are using one disk, if you are using one disk, it will probably fail after ninety one years. The next failure will occur after ninety one years. Okay, that is MTBF. If you are having hundred disks, there is a probability of one disk failing in one year. It may fail or it may not fail. After all, probability is that, right? It may fail or it may not fail. So now let us say, see about the failure rates. How do I represent the failure rate? Is it a constant throughout the life? No. You know, generally, you see, uh, whenever you buy a product, as soon as you buy buy the product, you may have one or two teething problems. They say something is not right, some wire is loose, some nut could have become loose. So you call the mechanic or the repair person, and then the, she repairs it. And then you you use it for a few years. There is no problem. Then again, towards the end, again more number of failures will occur. This is a very popular failure. Pattern in any product. So this is the famous bathtub curve. Bathtub curve. So what happens here? You see, in the initial phase, failure rates will be large as errors are debugged and rectified. You see, even a simple thing like releasing a new operating system in the market. 
So when a new version of the operating system comes, you know, there'll be a lot of problems, so many bugs. People keep reporting this happened, that happened, a lot of problems. Then slowly, one by one, everything will get rectified. Right? So this is true of any anything in the initial stage because there's a learning curve. We don't know everything about a system or the way it works as soon as the system is in place. Then during large of the working life, the failure is reduced. Very less. Randomly, one or two failures may occur. Definitely, they will occur. After it has been used for a long time, which we call as a wear out phase, then failure will again increase because of the wear and tear of different components in the system. At that time, you should replace it, like your car. They tell, no, it's a time to replace a car if it has run for one lakh kilometers or if it is around seven, eight years old, whichever is, whichever happens earlier. So that's called as a wear out phase. So let's look at the curve. So you see now why it's called as a bathtub, it looks like a tub. So initially, it has a high, fault rate. So this is the increment, the failure rate. It has a high failure rate. And this is called as infant mortality. Infant mortality. As slowly the bugs surface and they're rectified, the failure rate will come down. Then this is called as the normal cycle. So in between you see one or two failures you may have more or less constant. So this is called as the useful life. And then again, the wear out phase. So you see, if you have a car, sometimes the battery may break down, sometimes the brake may become loose, the clutch may go. So different components have different life cycles. So it starts failing in the wear out phase. So you get a bathtub curve, very commonly used um, uh, curve to represent the failures in systems and companies. Next, another way some products, they uh, follow this. It's called as a constant failure during work phase. So you see, of course, you have the ancient mortality, then it is constant. Then there is a Gaussian failure. This is only because of some random events, failures due to random events. And most of the random events in nature, they follow a Gaussian curve. Okay, so you have the initial failure, then you have the active life where failure is a constant. Then the wear out phase will be like this. Instead of just going up, it will give a Gaussian um, surface. The actual failure rate is something in between the two. So you don't have a constant. So you'll have peaks, Gaussian peaks in between like this. This will be the actual one. So some random phenomenon will be, will be there, which will increase the failure rate in one period, then come down something like this and then go on. So this is an approximate reliability curve. It's in between the bathtub, bathtub curve and the Gaussian curve. Now, since it is probability, uh, some probability distributions are uh, applied to reliability. So the first one is the exponential or Poisson's uh, distribution. So the primary trait of the exponential distribution is that it is used for modeling the behavior of items with a constant failure rate. So the failure rate, so here, here y axis is the failure rate and um, x axis is the time. So the failure rate is modeled as lambda into, see here lambda, lambda is the failure rate per unit time. We have already seen it. So the failure rate with respect to time is lambda into e to the power of minus lambda t. How do I get this lambda? This lambda is the failure rate per unit time. Two failures per year, five failures per year. I get it from statistics by sampling. Okay, products which have been in use. So at any given point of time, the failure rate is modeled as lambda into e to the power of minus lambda t. So I get an exponentially decaying uh, curve for different lambdas, you can plot it. You can plot the curve for different, this is for lambda is 0 0.01 and this is for 0 0.005. So for different lambdas, you can plot. 
this is a very popular uh, distribution used in reliability. And uh, next is the Gaussian or the normal uh, distribution. So the over voltage strength of the insulation, uh, mechanical strength of poles, etc. All these they follow this curve, right? So the failure rate will be very high during you know mid use, and then on either side it will reduce. One period will go to the peak, the failure rate. And then uh, where there is a physical fatigue, mechanical stress because of vibration or uh, you know because of the bearings, etc. So such uh, products uh, they they are uh, modeled using what is called as a log normal distribution. Here the failure rate increases initially and then it decreases eventually up, up, uh, approaching zero. So occurrence of lightning over voltages and over current magnitudes obey this, you know, this typical impulse. It follows like this. It increases. And when it is in increasing, you know, the fail failure rate of components may be high. If they withstand it, then it will come down. Then we have a binomial distribution. Very popular in probability theory. Supposing P is the probability that a device fails after t years 5% there is a 5% probability that this mobile will fail after 5 years how do they know they have sold this mobile they have seen so many customers and then get some statistics or they might have, they might have done some aging testing on mobiles right so p is the probability that a device fails after t years so obviously 1 minus p which in probability theory we represent by Q, is the probability that the device will not fail. That means it is still in operating condition. So Q is equal to one minus P. So now supposing I take N such devices, so let us say I take 10,000 such mobiles, the probability of it failing in five years is 5%. So P is 0 0.05 and Q is 0.05. 9.5 and I have 10,000 such devices. So N is 10,000. Now, what is the probability that five of these devices will fail? That is typically the problem taken by binomial distribution. The number has to be large. So that is given by N factorial. N is the number of devices divided by X factorial into N minus X factorial into p to the power of x and q to the power of n minus x. p is the probability of the device failing. x is the number of devices that may fail. So p to the power of x and q to the power of n minus x. So this is a standard uh, distribution, very popular in um, probability theory. The standard deviation of such a distribution is given by root of NPQ and the mean is given by NP. Standard deviation is root NPQ and mean is NP. Now, Poisson's distribution is given by, it's a modification of the binomial distribution. It is given by e to the power of minus mu, mu to the power of x by x factorial. So the standard de deviation is given by root of mu and mu is still NP. Mu is NP. So the reliability or survival rate is something we define. It is the probability that X is equal to zero. That means no products fail. What is the, it's only a probability. Please remember that. What is the probability that none of these mobiles will fail? See, look at the data what I have. The probability that this mobile will fail is 5%. Hence, the probability it will not fail is 95%. I have 10,000 in five years. Let us say I'm taking five years. And let us say I have 10,000 such mobiles. 
what is the probability that none of them will fail in five years? So this is the probability. e to the power of minus lambda t, which is equal to e to the power of minus t by mtbf, because lambda is one by mtbf. It is exponentially decreasing. That means what? The probability, the reliability function or the survival rate is decreasing, which means that in, when you take a large number of samples, the reliability decreases with time. The rate of survival reduces. Okay. So if you take the interval to be the MTBF itself, if you take the interval to be MTBF, that means time t, this is the failure rate at time t. If, if, if I take the t to be MTBF itself, then I'll have here e to the power of minus 1. And that percentage works out to 37%. Which means that, let us say we saw in the previous problem, the mean time between failures is 91 years. Okay. So if you have some n samples, if you have some n samples, at the end of 91 years, which is the mean time between failures, only 37% will still be in working condition. That's the mean. I repeat, if your mean time between failures is 91 years, what all does it mean? It means that, you know, if, if a product fails now, it will fail again after 91 years. Or, or if you buy a product now, then it, it will fail after 91 years. Okay, that is the first thing. That is the mean time between failures. And we saw that the failure rate for this is 1%. That means if you take 100 such products, one of them will fail in one year. That is the next mean. Then the third interpretation is at the end of 97 years, if you take a large number of samples, then only 37% of them will still be working. If the mean time is five, five years, then at the end of five years, only 37% will be working. So at the end of the mean time between failures, that is the time period. That's it. Clear? So um, in this session, I uh, introduced to you the concept of reliability. And uh, we saw that the cost of reliability is opposition. Uh, in opposition uh, from the utility perspective and from the customer perspective. The, for the utility, the cost goes up as reliability of the system increases and for the customer, it comes down. So for, to the system, the total cost would be the sum of the two. And we would choose to design and plan for a reliability where the system reliability cost is minimum. So it's a compromise for both the utility and the customer. The customer also has to invest some money for on reliability. The utility also has to invest some money on reliability such that the total cost is minimum. Then we saw the concept of failure rate, mean time between failures, and some of the distributions to represent uh, the reliability functions.